We've had over 500 vehicle tests on this channel, and almost all of them have headlight tests. So if you want to see how the lights on your vehicle work, this is the right place to be. Genesis sent us their G70 sedan to drive. 57,000 bucks worth of vehicle here. Very nice. We already did a road test on this and posted the video on YouTube. Got our performance figures, fuel economy figures, and the like. In this video, though, we're only doing headlight tests and night drive. And here's what the headlights look close up. If you want to see the full road test, we'll have a link for that at the end of this video. In the meantime, let's go out in the dark and see what happens. It's dark enough, let's take these headlights out and see what they're doing. Right now I have the low beams on. They seem to have two bulbs in here. About the same size top to bottom. So, let's go to high beam. No real change, just brighter. And here's what the tails look like. Nice looking. It's certainly bright enough. And here we are with the emergency flashers. And on the front getting drowned out by the headlights. And with the headlights off, uh, yeah, that's a lot better. And certainly bright enough back here. Now let's go inside and see how the cabin lights up in the dark. When you unlock the car in the dark, the Genesis emblem pops out on the pavement to remind you what you're driving. The info screen is not very large, but large enough for me. How big do you want it? Camera system has good resolution. Climate controls, very easy to use, well lit. These are the buttons here for navigation, map. Set up. Again, not the largest screen, but again, how big do you want it? A nice gauge cluster, very simple dials. And I have the illumination on low setting, but you can bump it up a bit if you want to see things look more clear. Now I have it on max, which means the gauge cluster is about four times as bright. Here's our controls on the steering wheel. If you watch our daytime video, as you should if you haven't already, the interiors of Genesis are first class all the way. All the controls are very simple, easy to use. Really doesn't get much better. But that is in the other video. We're doing night drive here. And if you watch my videos, I cannot stand auto dimming mirrors. If you don't have a disconnect switch, driving with black dot mirrors in city traffic is not only stupid, it's dangerous, but. Apparently we have no way to turn it off, so we have to suffer. You put a piece of tape over the sensor hole to turn it off, if you so desire. Alright, check out these headlights. 70 yards away, got a fence line, low beam, high beam. You can line up the building, that's a lot further away. Going up close, low beam. We have the 50-50 split that I don't like. Means Totally dark on the top and totally light on the bottom. No, I don't like this setup. But you never know to longer distances what it's really going to look like. So let's do that. Here we have a wall 400 feet away. It takes around 200 feet to stop a vehicle at freeway speeds. So we have twice the light we really need on high beam. Go low beam. I can barely see it with my eye, the curb, but you can on the camera. Let's give it closer for phase two. Now we're at 200 feet, the minimum performance standard we need. High beam, low beam reaching out. Good thus far. Even though it's a bit lower than I like, it reaches out. That's what counts. In 50 feet, well, obviously it's working. Low beam, again, cut off too short as far as height goes but it reaches out so no reason to really complain too much. Best way to judge headlight performance is to go out in the sticks. We're out in the sticks with the high beams on reaching out way out there about a mile. Low beam not quite as much but more than adequate. Uh, 
that's about three quarters of a mile it's about a half mile so I can't believe this I came up here to test out the headlights in the mountains and corners and we ran into fog this is the summertime it's 110 degrees in town today up here we've got fog in the desert in the summer this is impossible but well, obviously not unless I just ran to a forest fire Well, there's a lot of bears and mountain lions out tonight, so I guess I better turn around and go to a lower elevation before I hit something I don't want to. I can't believe this. The fog is so thick I can't even see the road. Hey, Genesis, I ran your car off a cliff. Can you send me another one? Man, I'd like to hear that when I call him tomorrow. Well, we missed it on camera. I almost hit a skunk. Missed him by a couple inches. It's better than hitting a mountain lion, but, well, maybe no, it's not. It stinks up the car. <laughs> For the record, we are around 6,000 feet from 1,100 feet where we started. It only took about 10 minutes to get up here, so... Uh, yeah. All right, now we continue with the test. Taking corners, got the high beams on. Very good illumination, of course. I was expecting that. Got a low beam. I'd like a bit more height. So there's something tall standing out there. I can see something besides legs. But in a situation like this, you're probably going to have the high beam on anyway. Especially with all the falling rocks I'm seeing on the road. Overall, these are pretty decent headlights, not the best I've ever used, but more than adequate. I really don't have any complaints. I don't think you will either. That includes our headlight test and night drive. Overall, I'd say the vehicle passed. If you want to see the full road test, the fuel economy numbers, here's the link coming up. Might as well watch it. You're already here. Two videos for the price of one free.